Rebecca McDermott's parents divorced when she was five years old. When she moved into a new home with her mother's family, a relative began to abuse Rebecca sexually. The abuse continued until Rebecca was 14 years old. I didn't feel good about myself. I felt ashamed of what I had participated in and I carried that with me. And if I wasn't a good person, then I would pick people who were not safe. Her next abuser was an 18-year-old boyfriend. Rebecca was pregnant at age 16. He was an abusive person emotionally and physically. And I guess I wanted that fairy tale dream and family that every, I think, little girl wants. Although they never married, Rebecca and her boyfriend had a second son. The relationship eventually ended, leaving Rebecca to raise two children alone. She struggled to provide for her family. A friend said, you can go and you don't have to try to work two jobs and you can make enough money if you uh, try working in a strip club. And he says, well, you don't have to strip, you can just waitress. When I first started working in the dance clubs, it was very traumatizing. I had never seen anything or experienced being in a dark place like, like that before. Rebecca turned to drugs and alcohol to numb her emotions. I had been around cocaine, but had chose not to do it. But I decided I was in this environment where it was dark. There were all these men. They, they were all partying. I did not want to be there, but I was there. And it seemed like, well, maybe I should just try this, maybe to make me feel better. And then I started becoming addicted to it and wanted more. Before long, she was spending so much on drugs that she turned to stripping to support her habit. I ended up stuck there for five to seven years. The types of men that I would go out with were abusive men. Um, they were also addicted to drugs and alcohol. A friend gave Rebecca a handgun to protect herself. So I took the gun and just put it underneath the car. And within three days, I was pulled over by the police and arrested for having the handgun in my car. Rebecca was sentenced to two weeks in the county jail. And that was like the worst two weeks of my life. It was, it was miserable. You feel like a uh, caged animal. And I knew that I was in there because they didn't feel that I should be out in society. A judge arranged for Rebecca to enter a drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. Every night we would gather around and we would uh, hold hands and we would say the serenity prayer. Eventually someone said, um, even if you don't believe, why don't you try praying again and just see what happens. So I went into my room and I got on my hands and knees and I actually said, God, if you are real, I really want you to come back into my life. Please forgive me for all of my sins and everything that I have done. Something happened after I said that prayer. I just, I just felt so at peace, like a big burden had been lifted off. Rebecca never returned to drugs, alcohol, or exotic dancing. After rehab, she attended business school, became a secretary, and eventually a photographer. Three years later, she met her husband. God has given me a wonderful husband who is the man that I have dreamed of. And he's also given me three more children. Now, 15 years later, Rebecca is the founder of White as Snow Ministries, which helps women in the sex industry change their lifestyles. If you just give him a chance, he will show you and he will guide you day by day. He's given me a fresh start and a new beginning. And if I can have that, anybody can have that.